Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Data Structures, we're going to look at binary search trees. So we've already looked at a couple different ways of storing data, and that was with uh, stacks and with uh, linked lists. And so we saw that in those cases, you know, data was kind of related to each other based upon when it was inserted into that data structure. So in the case of stacks, they were related by, say, um, the most recent thing added to the stack was at the top of the stack and then the oldest thing was at the bottom of the stack and then likewise uh, for linked lists you know it depends on whether we did say head insertion or tail insertion but there was some kind of ordering based upon you know hey everything's getting added at the very end of the list so the most recent thing to the end of the linked list or maybe we're doing head insertion so the most recent thing is going to be at the uh, at the head of the list now in this case we're going to look at binary search trees, which is a way of relating things based upon, say, a value instead of just how, or say, just only when it was inserted into the list. And we'll see that this is a really kind of convenient way uh, that we can have to extracting things back out. So a lot of times we don't just care about putting things into a data structure, we care about getting it back out. So let's start with an example. Say we've got, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll add, you know, nodes and nodes or different elements that we want to store, but say our first thing we want to store is 50. So we'll take 50 to be what's known as the root of our binary search tree, and that's just going to be kind of the first element that we're going to start all of our comparisons from. So a uh, each node in a binary search tree can have two children, right? It can have a left child and a right child. The left child, as part of the properties of a binary search tree, will be less than uh, the parent, and then the right child will be greater than the parent, which in this case happens to also be the root. So in this case, we could have, say, a value 25 be the left uh, child, and the right could be, say, 75. And this property is maintained at each level of the binary search tree. So in this case, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, make it a little more clear. So in this case, um, right here, we need a number that's greater than 50 but less than 75. So this would be, say, 60, and then this would be greater than 50 and greater than 75. So in this case, this would be 90. And then we fill out some values here. So 10 is going to be less than 25 and less than 50. And then, say, 40 is going to be uh, greater than 25 uh, but less than 50. Right. So that's kind of how we fill it out. And then in this case, this is generally called a perfect uh, binary search tree and the reason why we call it a perfect binary search tree is because every single node is filled and every single node has two children All right so this is uh, uh, th this is this is kind of your perfectly balanced uh, ideal case for a binary search tree but you can imagine another case where you could have you know say some pathological addition of entries so maybe the first thing you got was you know maybe 50 again but then your next node was say 49, then your next node was 48, next node was 47, you know, and so on. And in this case, you know, you're not going to get this nice pretty tree structure. You're going to get this kind of pathological case with this degenerate uh, binary search tree where all of your nodes end up going down one path, and so you don't really get any benefit out of representing it as a binary search tree. Uh, so that being said, we're going to kind of ignore that for now. We're going to focus on a little more ideal of cases to kind of motivate why we actually care about binary search trees and how they're useful. So let's think about, you know, how do we get something out of a binary search tree or, you know, why are binary search trees nice for extracting or searching? So in this case, let's say if we want to find an element, say with a value 90, right? So in this case, if we had just a normal array of data you know, we could have all of our elements, say 10, 25, uh, 40, and then we'll just skip over until we get to 90. So if we actually wanted to find 90 in here, in a very naive case, we would just search through every single element. So how many comparisons would we need to do? Well, we, need, we would need to do in comparisons. And this is kind of our worst case. So our worst case is that uh, we want to uh, our worst worst case is that we want to search for an element. That element is the last element. And in this case, we have to make in comparisons based upon the in elements. Now, why are binary search trees nice? It's because it, you know, if we have a perfect binary search tree like this, 
it cuts down uh, greatly. And so in this case, how many comparisons do we need? Well, the maximum number of comparisons that we ever need is going to be based upon the number of levels that we have. So in this case, uh, so we've got this like level zero, level one, and level two. So we really only need three comparisons. If we wanna look for 90, we compare it against 50, then against 75, then against 90. So, but that's the case for all of these. If we wanted to find 10, it would take 340, it would take 360, it would take three. If we move up a level, 25 and 75 would only take two comparisons. And then 50 itself would only require the one comparison. And so we can kind of step back and generalize this a little more and say that the number of comparisons we need for worst case and considering we've got you know a perfect tree like this it's only going to be log base 2 of the number of elements that we have and then we generally ignore this uh, this part when we're uh, uh, when we're talking about it because it it doesn't make a terribly big difference but you know formally we need to you know, say we need to round this number up as well. So in this case, we have seven total elements. So three here, three here. So that's six plus one is seven. So this ends up being log base two of seven. We round that up. Log base two of seven ends up being the value of log base two of eight, which is going to be equal to three, right? And so we see that for the three levels we have, uh, that's the maximum number of comparisons that we'll, that we'll need to do. So of course, if you think about you know less ideal trees like that degenerate tree that we saw earlier well the degenerate tree can have the worst case time of exactly like just that array because you know we're not pairing off you know any amount of the tree every time we go down a level everything is still on that one path so in this case why the binary search tree works is that after we do this comparison against 50 or rather why it works well for searching is that when we pair off 50 or when we say that okay well 90 is greater than 50 well we can cut off this entire side of the tree because we know that it's not going to fall on that side of the tree and likewise when we get to 75 we can cut off 60 as well because we know that that side of the tree will be strictly less than 75 so you know it's it can never be 90 and so that's why you know binary search trees are kind of important and why we care about them so that aside let's actually go into an implementation of a binary search tree. All right, so let's go ahead and full screen this and we'll go ahead and log in. And here we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go into binary search tree.cpp and we'll just include a few things. We'll include the standard library, an assert, vector, and then IO stream for printing some stuff out. So, the first thing we'll need is a node, right? And this will be each of those elements uh, that are, you know, you know, they could be the root, they could be a child node. You know, that's what these nodes are. So here we've got each node has a left and a right child, and then it'll have some piece of data associated with it. And then we'll have a simple constructor where, you know, initially a node will still have some data, but it doesn't necessarily have any children yet. So we'll leave those as null pointers. And then we'll have a class, so we'll have a uh, binary search tree class that will have, you know, a special node being the root, so that will be the root of our uh, binary search tree. And then our constructor will just set the root to be a null pointer because it doesn't exist yet. And then we'll have two methods, one for insertion and then one for searching. So in this case, what do we have? All right. So uh, how do we insert into a binary search tree? based upon what we saw earlier. So we're going to kind of do a recursive strategy for inserting into the binary search tree. We'll, we'll return a node pointer uh, from this method, and then uh, it'll take a node pointer and it will take uh, you know, the data that we're actually going to insert. So in this case, we'll start off all of our inserts by uh, passing in the root node. And so we'll use that as kind of our base case. So if you pass in the root node, the root node doesn't exist yet, it'll see, okay, well, this is going to be a uh, null pointer. So uh, this is where we need to insert because we can't go down any further from here. So this must, must be the spot. So what we'll do is we'll print out an X to say that this is the spot. Um, and then we'll go ahead and return a pointer to the, our, our newly created node. 
and uh, we'll see exactly what we do with that pointer that we just created uh, in these next two cases. So the other two cases are, okay, well, we're not at the spot we need to be because in being our argument here uh, for a node pointer, uh, since that's not a null pointer, that means we still need to traverse the tree more. So in this case, if we find that, you know, uh, the data that we're trying to insert is less than the data at the current node, then we should go down the left side of the tree. So in this case, we'll go ahead and say that, you know, the left node is going to be insert node of the left node and D. So we'll go ahead and pass that node down as saying, okay, well, try going down the left path. And then, you know, if that node doesn't exist, we'll end up returning this new node. If that node does exist, then what this will end up returning is just the same node. So that's what this does down here. So if a node uh, does not exist yet and we get a null pointer, it will return a new pointer so that we create that part of the binary search tree. Otherwise, it will just return down here, uh, just the regular node unchanged. So then likewise with the right side of the tree, we'll just insert a node down the right path uh, if the node is new, then this call to insert node will find that the right path has a null pointer, and then it'll set the right uh, child in order to be that new node that we created here in the next call. And then otherwise, uh, we find that, so one of, the, one of the properties that we talked about was that it has to be, an, a piece of data has to be less than or greater than a, uh, uh, the, the parent node. Now in the case where you get duplicate entries, or rather you've got two things with the same values, in this case we're just going to assert because then we're not maintaining that property of uh, you know, the left has to be less than, the right has to be greater than, so we'll just, set, we'll just fail here and say you try to do something that's legal in a binary search tree. Okay, so that's how we insert. So how do we search? So search we won't take a recursive strategy. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do it in a while loop. And so what we'll do is we'll just say while this temp node that we'll initialize to the root is not equal to null pointer, we'll go ahead and uh, search down the tree, right? So if uh, the temp node, uh, the, the data of the temp node matches the data that we're looking for, then we'll go ahead and return that node. Otherwise, we'll go down the left path and we'll assign the temp node to be down the left path. Or if it's on the right path, we'll uh, go ahead and you know add down the right path and then otherwise it turns out that the node just didn't exist it wasn't something we've added or maybe even our entire tree doesn't exist yet and our root is null so we'll return null pointer here and so to test this out we'll do two things so we'll go ahead and create a binary search tree we'll set a random seed so that you know we'll get the same results on anyone's machine uh, so that we can replicate our results rather and then we'll go ahead and store all the different nodes that we added inside of a vector. And so we'll just create a random number between 0 and 999. And then we'll go ahead and save that, like I said, in this vector. And then we'll insert it down here into this bst.root equals bst.insert. And the reason why we do this bst.root equals is because uh, consider the first case where we're inserting a, uh, if we're inserting the root. Right, so the root is still a null pointer. And so this this call will just return back to the main function, uh, this pointer to the new node. So down here, this will just, on the first call to insert node, it'll set the root node. And then every time after that, it will just copy the root node back into the root node. Uh, then down here, we'll go ahead and just search for all of the, uh, so using this C++11 type, for each loop, we'll go ahead and just take each element from our data vec, and we'll search for it inside of our binary search tree. Along the way, we'll print out all the paths that we take. So let's go ahead and uh, show this off. So we'll do G++ dash O, binary search tree, binary search tree dot CPP. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, or let's zoom out a little bit more. All right, so then, We'll just go ahead and run it. So let's see what happens. So when we insert our first node, say 383, 
that will go ahead and hit immediately because that'll end up being our root node. Now 886 is greater than 383, so it'll go down the right path before finding its spot. 777 will also go down the right path, but it will be less than 886, so it'll go down the left path before finding its home. Likewise, 915 will go down the right path first, but then also go down the right path second because 915 is greater than 886. And then we'll skip over 793. Uh, let's go to a case we go down the left path. So here we insert 335. 335 will be less than 383, so we'll go ahead and go down uh, the left path after 383 before finding its spot, and so on and so forth. So we don't wind up with a perfect, uh, perfectly balanced uh, search tree here, but it does show off going down both the sides and you know kind of filling out the tree. So in this case, uh, in the searching, we see the exact same results, right? So if we wanted to look for, say, 383, what we would need to do is, uh, well, that's just the root, so we get it immediately. For 886, we have to go down the same path that we inserted 886 into. And then likewise, for something a little more complicated, say 421, uh, we would have to go down the right path and the left path and the left path and the right path and the left path before finally finding that node. But the key point is, is that every single time we cut off half the tree every time we go down another path. And so that's really kind of the nice part about binary search trees. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. Feel free to check out my GitHub at github.com slash coffee before arch where I post all of this code. So here we looked at C++ data structures. I've got links to all the other videos as well as links to all the files associated with those videos. So we looked at data structures, binary search tree, and we looked at this file. So feel free to take a look at this, uh, play around with it, you know, modify it as much as you want. And then of course, make sure to let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything in particular that you want to learn. But as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day.